Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about all the details of gluconeogenesis that occurs in our body. So the first question is, what is gluconeogenesis? It's the synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors. Some examples are pyruvate and lactate. The main goal here is to produce glucose and release it into our bloodstream when we need it. How is this process all activated? When our glucose level is low in our body, the pancreas will send out glucagon to stimulate gluconeogenesis. There are two main functions to this process. The first one is to lower the fructose 2,6-bisphosphate in the liver, which will slow down the process of glycolysis. The second function is to stimulate the synthesis of glucose, which will be released into our bloodstream. I want to briefly talk about this regulation that occurs when glucagon is present in our body. So glucagon will bind to the glucagon receptor, which is a G-protein coupled receptor. The alpha subunit of this protein will activate adenylate cyclase, which will convert ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase A, which will phosphorylate PFK2, but leave fructose bisphosphatase 2 active. This fructose bisphosphatase 2 will convert fructose 2,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, which will reduce the activation of glycolysis so we won't be breaking down as much as glucose in our body. So this is what the overall gluconeogenesis mechanism looks like. It almost looks like the backward version of glycolysis, but we can see that the ones in pink are the different enzymes that are used specifically in gluconeogenesis. First step of this whole mechanism is the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate. Pyruvate and cytosol enters mitochondria and gets converted. This process is an irreversible step, and the enzyme used is pyruvate carboxylase. Pyruvate carboxylase fixes carbon dioxide, and it requires a cofactor called biotin. Biotin is a vitamin that is always, in car always involved in carbon dioxide fixation. This is the picture of the mitochondria. Pyruvate will enter, and it will be converted to oxaloacetate. But oxaloacetate can't leave the mitochondria, so it has to be converted into malate first. The malate will leave the mitochondria and go out into the cytosol, which will be then converted back to oxaloacetate. The enzyme used in this mechanism is called malate dehydrogenase. The second step of gluconeogenesis is the conversion of oxaloacetate into phosphoenol pyruvate. This requires GTP and it releases CO2. The enzyme used used in this mechanism is called phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. So the steps I'm going to be going over in our pathway are identical to the ones you would see in the glycolysis pathway, just in reverse. So for step three, we're going to start off with our phosphoenol pyruvate from our last reaction. With an addition of H2O, in the enzyme enolase, we are going to get a 2-phosphoglycerate. This 2-phosphoglycerate with the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase is going to become 3-phosphoglycerate. Our 3-phosphoglycerate with the addition of ATP and the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase is going to give us 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and ADP plus hydrogen. Our 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate with some NADH and hydrogen, as well as the enzyme glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase, is going to result in glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, some NAD+, and a phosphate group. This glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate with the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase is going to become dihydroxyacetone phosphate. In addition to obtaining dihydroxyacetone phosphate by synthesizing it from pyruvate, glycerol may be used from triglyceride hydrolysis. Glycerol is phosphorylated by glycerol kinase, 
which uses ATP to form glycerol phosphate. Glycerol phosphate is then oxidized by glycerol, by glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase, causing two hydrogens to be removed by converting NAD plus to NADH and H plus, while dihydroxyacetone phosphate is formed. Continuing through the normal process of gluconeogenesis, we come to step eight. Two dihydroxyacetone phosphates are joined together by aldolase A to create fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. During step nine, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is dephosphorylated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase to generate fructose 6-phosphate and inorganic phosphate. From there, fructose 6-phosphate is isomerized into glucose 6-phosphate by phosphoglucoisomerase. Lastly, glucose 6-phosphate is dephosphorylated by glucose 6-phosphatase to create the end product of gluconeogenesis, glucose.